Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode two of Game Programming. Okay, so yesterday we took a look at uh, creating a basic window, like in terms of resolution, right? We just set three variables, which essentially control the size of our game for now anyway, because obviously we can change them in the future. Um, now, today we're going to talk about threads. Now, threads are very, very important, all right? So the first thing I want to do is just write one line of code, right? So private thread thread. Now, essentially what we're doing here is we're creating a private object so that it's only visible to this class, game.java, um, and we're creating a thread, right? And we've named it thread. So what a thread is, a thread in Java and in, in general in, in computing is it's basically almost like a process within a process. So if you actually open up all your processes on your computer, right, and you can do that by uh, just going to task manager. Um, if you're running a Java uh, process, for example, let me just find like this one, right? So this is like the Java um, platform. If you're running one of these, within this process is a bunch of other processes, right? So it's not like we're creating a new process. No, we're just creating like a new sub process. That's what you can, that, that's what you can think of a thread as being a sub process. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to do multiple things simultaneously. Um, we've already got one thread, right? One thread which actually just runs our, our program. Now we want to make another thread to actually handle the game itself. So that's what, that's what we're doing here. We're creating a new thread object. Now we haven't started the thread or anything. So at the moment it's just dead, but we've created an object out of it so that now we can manipulate it into what we want. All right. And we can do that by, um, by making a, a method, right? So we're going to make a method now and it's going to be public. Now it's going to be synchronized and I'll explain what that means in a second. Public synchronized void. Um, and we'll just call it start, right? And inside here, all we're gonna do is type thread equals new thread. Now, before I go any further, um, I wanna explain a few things. First of all, synchronized. A lot of you guys are probably gonna be wondering what synchronized means. Now, essentially, I don't wanna really get into like too deep into synchronized, but essentially we're just writing synchronized here. Um, because we want like a, a, I guess, a strategy for just preventing thread interferences and memory consistency errors. All right. And synchronize is a great way to do this. The reason is this thread, this, this, uh, this thread thing is going to be visible to multiple threads, right? Because we've got multiple threads running now. We've got our first thread, which actually runs our program and as well as, you know, exits out of our program. And then we've got our game thread. I could have named this game thread. In fact, I probably will in a second. But um, synchronize is just, it just ensures that there's no like interleaves or I guess overlaps of instructions for this thread object. Because since we're dealing with threads here, it's very important that we don't screw up. Um, because if we do, then, well, that's bad. The whole thing crashes. In fact, our computer could even lock down. So uh, it's very important that we do this. Now, what I want to do first of all, actually, is um, make sure that our, our game class actually implements runnable. Now, we'll get an error here and that's all right. Um, but what this allows us to do is actually make sure that this thread object that we create, we can actually just put this in it now. If we didn't have runnable, we wouldn't be able to do this. Now, what this means is that the new thread that, that we're creating, right, will contain this game class, right? Hence, hence this, you know, same thing as writing new game, but we actually want this instance of game. To be here. And that just means that this thread is basically attached to this game object. Um, now, optionally, we can give this thread a name. And as I mentioned, it might be useful. So we just, we'll just call it display. Um, or we could have called it game. Okay. That's, a, that's another parameter when you're creating um, a new thread. So, um, so yeah. So now that we've created our thread, we need to start it. Because essentially what we've done is we've created a method to start threads. So let's start the thread. We do that simply by writing thread.start. Now what happens is when we actually run the start method, when we call the start method, we'll create a new thread object and we'll start that thread object. So essentially we've created a new thread by this. Um, now similarly to starting this, we also want a method to stop our thread. And the, and the reason is usually in applets, you want to be able to stop the applet because if, if we're doing this in a web browser, think of, think of it this way. If we're running a, if we're, if we're just running a game on the desktop and we want to close it, we close it and then that's the end of it. But we might want to stop, like Java needs a way to stop a thread in an applet because you might still want to continue using your web browser even after you actually stop. 
Now the problem without stopping is that even if you stop, for example, even if you like, I don't know, close a tab containing an applet, what you might notice is the music actually keeps playing. And that's because the thread wasn't properly stopped. We haven't actually shut down the game properly. So we wanna be able to shut down our game safely and properly if we're using this in an applet. Now the way we do that is creating a stop method. So what we need to do is go public. Again, we're gonna make it synchronized because we're dealing with threads here and we don't want any memory consistency errors or anything like that. We'll call it stop. And uh, essentially all we're gonna do is, I guess, wait for the thread to die, right? We've closed it, let's just join all the threads together. So we call thread dot join, right? And you'll notice that it actually throws an exception. So what we need to do is actually try and catch that exception. So if we put try over here and catch an interrupted, oops, make sure you spell it right, interrupted exception A, um, and I don't know, we'll just print the stack trace because that's what everyone does. Um, Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and do this. Now, if this fails, then we're just gonna, I guess, exit out of our program because, well, we don't really care because we failed catching the thread, that doesn't matter. Um, let's just leave it at that, all right? And that is honestly as simple, as simple as it is to, um, to actually uh, stop thread, all right? So what will happen is when we actually get into, um, into applets, we'll be able to call this method to stop the applet. So um, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much our, intro our introduction to threads. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna take a look at um, probably an actual game loop, pretty much, as well as the run method uh, to actually make our game, I guess, you know, have a bit of, um, you know, essentially to run is what I'm trying to say. Uh, one more thing, you can actually follow me on Twitter if you would like, uh, the link is in the description. A lot of you guys um, have a lot of questions and ask me, um, you know, when the next video is coming out. The best way, honestly, to get my attention is Twitter and um, as well as receive updates from me in terms of, you know, where the episode is at. Um, so yeah, also if you like this video, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys tomorrow with, um, with a new video. So yeah, later guys.